What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back, everyone. This is Lee, and yes, today's the day we'll be talking about the benefits in shooting in crop mode on your full frame body. So, without further ado, let's begin. So believe it or not, this whole video came from a comment in my Nikon Z9 crop versus the Nikon D500. And ever since then, I just kept thinking about it because I think it's more to it than just telling someone that when shooting crop mode, all you're doing is cropping off the edges and uh, it's a 1.5 crop and uh, yeah, you just get more of the center frame. I think there's more to it than that. So hopefully in this video, we learn more than just that, right? But uh, yeah, let's get to it. This is a Nikon Z9 full frame crop. What is the benefit in shooting crop or however I'm gonna name this video, we'll see, we will see. So let's take a look at our first slide. Now here is our first slide. This is a Nikon Z9 at 45 megapixel. And here is the crop mode at 19.37 megapixel. It is not as wide as a Nikon D500. It's slightly smaller because Nikon D500 is what, 20 megapixel? So yeah, there we go, right? Now for the next slide, here is 20 files versus 20 files, full frame and crop. And as you can see, you are saving a little bit more than 50% of the file size if you're shooting in crop. So if you're on a long assignment or you have a small SD card and the event is quite long, you might end up wanting to shoot crop because you will be saving a lot of files onto your SD or CF Express card. So there we go. Now for this next test, I am using a Sabrent CF Express card. If you did not watch my last video on the CF Express for your Nikon Z9, the Sabrent is the slowest, but it gives you more bang for your buck in terms of storage, right? But let me show you what this Sabrent sounds like in full frame mode. Now, let's switch it to crop mode. And here is the audio on top of one another. And as you can see, when switching to crop mode, you're able to shoot more frames per seconds than the 45 megapixel full frame. And this is also true when you're auto focusing from full frame to crop. And if you guys been shooting zones, you notice that your auto focus is a lot snappier because you're not focusing on unwanted areas in your whole scene. So there we go. Now here's the bokeh section and let's take a look at one to one. And as you can clearly see, the bokeh is more or less the same. I don't see a huge difference. Maybe you guys might see a slight difference. Let me know down below in the comment section. But to me, I don't see any difference. So that's actually pretty good, right? So there we go. Now here is my studio test. And as you can see, here's full frame versus crop and when zooming in one to one, I don't see a huge difference. Maybe crop is slightly, just just slightly darker. Not a big deal if you're editing, but it's yeah, just want to be slightly critical, but not a big deal really. But anyways, in this next test, we're doing dynamic range test, and I just want to let you guys know that I did not tinker with the uh, flickering for the banding because I want to see if crop mode actually removed banding. So let's take a look. Now here is one to 1000 and already, as you can see, um, both have banding. So there we go. Yeah, both of them have banding. So I didn't escape nothing, but let's take a look at the next test. Here is 2000 shutter speed right here. And already looks like the crop mode did worse than the full frame. So that's, that's, yeah, that, that was pretty sad when I saw it. I was like, oh no, that's pretty sad. But uh, the show must go on, right? So I went to 4,000 shutter, right? And to my surprise, for this particular situation, crop mode actually edged out the full frame with the banding without, you know, tinkering with the flicker reduction because some of you guys are just on a go. You guys don't want to tinker with the numbers on the flicker reduction. So there is a good chance when switching in crop, just a slight chance, the banding might disappear. Maybe, maybe, right? Now here is the overexposure test. Yes, I'm including overexposure from here on out. Here is one and one tenth.
yeah, there is no, uh, <laughs> there's no difference. I, I don't see any difference. Actually, leave your comments down below if you if you see a difference. So yeah, I would love to know if you guys see any difference. I don't see any difference, but definitely leave a comment down below. This is one fifth. There is no difference. I, I see no difference. So it looks, the image looks exactly the same. Now in this next test, this is my ISO test. Here is 64, here is 100, here is 400, here is 800, here is 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,800, and ISO 25,600. Now, that's just to let you guys see if there's any color shift at all, but let's zoom in a little bit. Here's a one to one. Here is ISO 64, ISO 100, ISO 400, ISO 800, ISO 1600, ISO 3200, ISO 6400, ISO 12,800, and ISO 25,600. I don't think I saw a huge difference. It looks, the noise level looks more or less the same. And so, yeah. So just wrap things up. Is crop mode beneficial when shooting at a 45 megapixel high-end full frame camera? I think it's situational. It depends on the end user, what they own, what their subject is. When I shoot wildlife, I shoot in crop mode all the time, unless the bird is getting closer to us, then we all just switch to full frame. That's a little hack that we do out there, but let me know down below if you guys also shoot in crop mode. I'm very interested to see what people say down below, but uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely click like and subscribe, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy, peace.